Mixed Med Health, how are you doing? Well, first of all, I want to thank all of you for hanging in there on the very final day down to the last minute. Uh, I'm going to have a very exciting presentation for you here in just a moment. Um, I heard uh, in the comment during the break uh, a pharmacist. Oh, they were asking, who, who was that? Are they still here? Uh, oh, she's right there. Are you a pharmacist? Okay, okay. Well, hey, well, well let's have a conversation. Well, anyway. Several years ago, I had an opportunity to, to really delve into and start the, the pharmacy of the future. And most importantly, I really began thinking, you know, having come here about 10 years ago, I've been coming for 10 years, I really began thinking, how can we reimagine what pharmacy can be and what it should be? As a dean of pharmacy, I'm trying to get to the next level, the next generation of pharmacists. And so what you're looking at here, uh, right here in the United States, we have about, about 5 billion prescription filled a year. But in reality, it's really far more than that because embedded in that number are 90-day fills. So we're probably filling close to 6 billion prescriptions a year here, uh, here in this country. So again, back in 2014, I had the opportunity to start what I called at the time the pharmacy of the future. And it was really exciting. A pharmacy had been there before. They were very traditional. And when they approached me, I said, you know, I think I want to do something a little bit different. And so, this was my idea back then in 2014 of what the pharmacy of the future should be. Now, what you're looking at is a rendering that we developed at the time with the architectural team. And, and, and quite honestly, even you know, all these years later, I still have not seen anyone kind of mimic. I thought by now this would be you know, ubiquitous in Walgreens and CVS. They would have stolen the idea, but they haven't. But I would argue that if you look here, there are still three, four, maybe even five elements that if you walk into any pharmacy right now, you're not going to commonly find even today that we are commonly doing. And by the way, this is a fully functioning pharmacy that is open right now. But I started off with making sure that we mapped out everything according to a zone and a process. I wanted to really think about what should be occurring and what can we gather from the common commerce and put into that location. And so you all see things that even back in 2014 and 2015, we were talking about big data, the internet of things. You know, we began displaying all the mobile and wearable apps on the wall. We weren't selling it, but we wanted to socialize the idea. And then on, oh, in the lower right corner, patient engagement. I'm gonna come back to that in just a moment. So here's an actual photograph. And <clears throat> one thing you will notice, we did not do any straight lines. We tried to stay away from uh, straight lines. When people walk in, I wanted them to feel something different. I wanted them to have a visceral feel. I commonly believe that you don't have straight lines in nature. And I think that we are wired to actually feel and experience that. And so here's one photograph and then here's a second one. And so along the way, I ran into this guy, Daniel Kraft, and we became friends. And so he invited me to come back in 2015 and talk about the pharmacy of the future right here on this very stage. And back then we were exponential medicine. But now what had been the future is now common. Our students have been going through there for years. What are we going to evolve into next? What is going around in the mind of, of someone like a Kevin Sneed? And so now I'm introducing to you the very next thing that we're going to get into, uh, the evolution of everything that you saw before. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to start here on the left and kind of work our way around. But we're taking a very similar mapping process that we did before. And so here are the elements that we're actually going to plan to implement now into that very same location. And now what's happening is quite, quite funny. I just got a text right before coming on stage about, and I won't say which team, but they're saying, hey, there, there's a professional team in Florida that now wants you to bring this pharmacy into their location. Do you have any interest? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I wish Tom Brady was still around. But in any event, uh, we're going to start here in the top right and then work our way around in omics lab, 3D printing, and telehealth avatars. Uh, all of you really heard the really compelling uh, conversation we had with, with, um, uh, with Alistair Martin. Uh, and so I, I see a brand new role for on-site on -site pharmacy research, holographic data, and then we really want to make sure that we're being available for, for uh, our patients. It's really important to understand, how many people remember Y2K? 
Remember we were going to shut down? The whole world was going to shut down. Remember that? Well, guess what? Now we're about to be in the second quarter of the 21st century. And I couldn't be more optimistic than, than anything that we have going on. So again, just to kind of bring your attention here, and in just a moment, I want you all to really also pay attention to the uh, Iron Man holographic. I, I didn't put it in bars, but I really want to bring your attention there. But all of you, on, uh, all of you recognize this here on the Matrix, the red pill or the blue pill. Well, eventually, when I want that patient to come along and say, red pill or blue pill, well, what did my pharmacogenomics say? Did it tell me which one I should take? And I want Morpheus to say, you know, I think you need to go talk to your pharmacist. And so what we are developing in our college right now is a whole group, entire groups, an entire class. We are bringing about what we call the molecular clinical pharmacist. We put pharmacogenomics and just genomics in general into, into the curriculum so we can train entire cohorts. That's one thing that we have not done in the educational system at all. Many people still today don't know. They, they want to order it, but then they hear, well, after I order it, what do I do with the information? Well, we're, we're going to take care of that uh, challenge, and, and we're developing that right now. If any of you have been to Disney World or if you have children, and you can, uh, and they go and they get that really, that big tube, and they just sugar themselves into oblivion, okay? Well, I took my children back in 2012, that's a very important part of the story here, to Disney, my, my son's on uh, 13th birthday. And when it was time to go, my wife said, okay, let's go. And I said, wait a minute. And she kept saying, Kevin, let's go, let's go. And I said, wait. And I must have taken 20 pictures of people walking up and, and getting that candy because what I saw were people coming up and getting medication. I said, what if that were medication in there? And what if we could personalize the medication back to the individual patient? And what, what if we had 3D printing? And so I, had, I, had, you know, I was pondering about this and then I said, you know what? Nobody in the entire world is talking about doing 3D printing. And I, was, and, I was, and I was putting a little team together and I talked to our engineering college. Lo and behold, some guy that we all know had already done it. But I couldn't have been happier because when he and I talked about it, I said, you know, I want to be one of your locations, you know, and let's talk about 3D printing and we can match it with pharmacogenomics and, and personalized medicine. We can improve adherence. We can actually create a brand new value proposition for all of our patients. And so, again, coming back here, uh, now we're gonna, I'm going to bring your attention to the top right corner. In that very location, we were doing telehealth before people were calling it telehealth. We were already communicating with patients back and forth in that little video room up in the top, in the top right. But then I came here in 2019, and my, my very good friend, Chris Hillier, began talking about digital humans. Now, this is from 2019. The skill I am most excited about is patient activation. Imagine if technology like me could be used for better outcomes and experiences before, during, and after professional care. Not only can I help patients and their families, I can also help the healthcare team. And that was the moment that he had me. I can also help the healthcare team. I began imagining what if we could get that digital uh, human and put it into our pharmacy environment. And when people really want to walk away and, and we can have AI in the background talking with the patient and we can gather data about their challenges. Is the medication working? And that whole idea about medication working really began to make me think, what should the role of the pharmacist in the 21st century, in the second quarter of the 21st century be? I'm sorry, I know it's a busy slide, but pay attention to the bulleted points here, the, the large bulleted points. My vision is that uh, pharmacists must get beyond being purveyors of, of product, okay, where we're simply dispensing product to a patient. And we must now engage as part of a healthcare team, a patient-centered approach, where we are measuring and monitoring the effectiveness of the medication that's given. That should be the new role, and that's what we're training our current pharmacy students to do. I'm develop developing a process right now called uh, prescribing a, a drug, prescribing app, and prescribed knowledge. 
when the medication comes into the pharmacy and the patient comes to pick it up, they should automatically get all those tools right there that we've been talking about for years. They should automatically get a fitness tracker and a Bluetooth blood pressure cuff, a CGM. It should, it should be automatic. And we shouldn't have to worry about who's going to pay for it because what we're really paying for is the data that we're going to gather from it. And then here again at the very bottom, we want to make sure that we're going to build an ecosystem around the patient with blockchain and interoperability so that now the patient controls their data. I talk to far too many people now where they have too many portals, they have too much information. So, uh, very quickly, uh, the pharma uh, and the clinical surveys, uh, you know, pharmacy uh, locations all over the country, people are walking in, we collect no data. I think pharma should come in to every pharmacy, about 28,000 in the country, and we should collect data and, and do surveys, and we should use that location as a patient, uh, cl a clinical patient information location. Here are some of my patients. Okay, even though I'm a dean, I still have patients in the clinic. You all can see one of my patients here, Darth Vader. He's always out of control. He's always upset about something, threatening everybody. But the actual fact of the matter is, we need to map what was going on with him back to the medications and have AI in the background trying to figure out why is he not improving. Simply giving people a medication doesn't mean the medication worked. It doesn't mean that they're even taking the medication. We have to do far better than what we've done. So I'm working with a company, uh, again, my friend out here, and it's a Canadian company, and I'm working with them right now, MMHG, uh, to build an AI-driven platform. Now, they already have the platform, but they contacted me they said, well, you know, we don't understand why more pharmacists aren't doing, uh, aren't, aren't adopting our platform. I said, give it to me and I'm going to help you out. So we're starting a pilot project with them right now, and I'm going to be pushing them to put more AI in the background. And so uh, just a moment ago, uh, just to day. kind of speed up. Keep up with those changes, both pharmacy and pharmacists have had to do the same. Technology and entrepreneurship is where we plan to include virtual and augmented reality, a multi taxing video wall, CAD drawing software, 3D printing, and holographic technology for virtual collaboration. Envision a space where students, faculty, and staff, and community partners can come together and collaborate. It is now the pinnacle of the pillar pharmacist career opportunities and reshape the future of pharmacy and healthcare. So the number one thing that I wanted to do was make sure we built a platform that would allow our students to actually be able to learn everything I just talked about. And it's working. By the way, you know, we talk about in entrepreneurship and, 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 and doing a pitch. We actually developed, we, we don't have the shark tank, we have the bull tank. And we had two groups win a statewide competition already as part of our iTech Academy. And then finally, I just want to make sure, you know, it's not good enough to really give access to all, to, for all this information and, and all these uh, technologies. We have to work harder. We cannot lose the human touch. We have to work harder for adoption. We all know about social determinants of health, but now we really need to focus, all of you here need to focus on the digital determinants of health. And we are partnering with Tampa General Hospital to bring the hospital into the home. But the most important thing that they did here was look at the people that they have, that they're showing in the, in the, in the, uh, in the advertisement. We want to make sure that everybody feels welcome. We want to make sure that people have the adoption of that and not simply that we're providing something they're not ready for. And so finally, uh, the number one thing that we have to uh, overcome is interoperability. We have to make sure that all the information we collect in the pharmacy can be shared. And we need to be able to pull information from any environment. Again, blockchain is going to be a very critical part for the future of pharmacy at 28,000 locations around the United States. And so with that, thank you all very much. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope I inspired you. Amazing work. It's great to see the evolution. Just real quickly, what do you see the, with all these new tools, AI, ChatGPT, the future of the far, role of the pharmacist? You know, the, the, the future role of the pharmacist really is going to be, you know, making sure that we are hitting the, the patient outcome that was intended for the medication to begin with. Every medication problem may not be a medication problem. It may be a social problem. You know, we may need a social worker. We may need a dietitian. We may need a lot of different things, and, but we have to make sure we're engaged in not simply giving medication out to people, but also making sure that when we give it to them, that it's achieving the outcome we want. 100%. Thank you, Kevin.